but I am. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, wow, nice crowd. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of history about myself. Um, and I've got some students here. Thank you for coming. Um, I, I've been doing clay, I think, about 25 years on and off, um, maybe a little longer. That's about how long I've been a member here at OPA. And um, Richie Bellinger was actually my first hand-building teacher. So this man teached me a lot, taught me a lot, teached me. <laughs> um, so, Richie, you were fantastic. And on a little uh, side note here, too, I, Larry and Debbie Nelson also took classes from, from Richie and then also Todd Whitlock. So, of course, that's not how I met them. I think we met in a bar or something, maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, um, all right, well, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to make the collage plate. So I'll just show you a couple of samples. Um, these are some of my collage plates that I make. This is just one big slab of clay and then I added some elements to it. Um, this is another collage plate. I think this was the one that was advertised. And what I do is I, I roll out the slab about a quarter of an inch, and then I actually go a little bit thinner. So it's really reminiscent to a, a real paper collage that I put together. So I also do mixed media, and collage is one of my favorite things to do. So why not translate that into clay? Um, and then I also make my own stamps. Um, the, these are more commercial stamps. That's a license plate. But these ladies that you see, this is called my Peekaboo series. Um, these ladies that you see are all hand carved stamps. So I have a few samples of that. Um, this is a peacock. These are some ladies. Um, Kuan Yin, I'm not sure if you can see that. Actually, you can pass them around. How about that? If you want to. Yeah, and so it's rubber material, so it's called, the, the brand is Easy Cut with a K. And then what I do is I draw the image on a piece of paper with like a soft graphite pencil. I don't draw directly on the rubber because I can't erase it. But I put it on a piece of paper and then I do a rubbing. And then that transfers onto that Easy Cut material. And then I come in with a speedball tool. It's got like a little V shape. And then I carve that out, kind of similar to linoleum block cutting. So... And then I press that into the clay, and I'll show you that. And then here's some other ones. Um, I won't pass this one around because I've got to use that. It's a little lady. And so I'm really inspired by um, the Art Nouveau movement. Alphonse Mucha, you probably know who he is. He's from Czech Republic, no longer with us, but I got to see that in Prague, his museum. Um, but beautiful, these women that he, he does. So I just kind of like, you know, very inspired by him. So you want to pass that around, Mr. Samuel? Not this one, though. Just these two. Just these two. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the clay body that I'm working with. Oh, and another tip or another um, thing I didn't tell you. You probably all know this, but I work um, for Georgie's as well. I'm the hand building teacher there. So I've been there about I've been teaching almost 10 years. Um, and so I their their products are awesome. Um, when I first started there 10 years ago, I was working behind the front counter and I got to know all the product line and the glazes, and then I really got attached to the um, the interactive pigments, which are oxides, and started just going crazy with those things. And and then Christy Runyon, who is the gal who makes all the glazes and the clay bodies, noticed that I was using them a lot, because those are her babies, she created them, and hired me to do interactive pigment workshops, and then I started teaching there as a hand-building teacher. So, um, that's how I got into that. So I'm going to just use this as a reference. Put this over here. So I'm working with, um, trail mix, which is a Georgie's clay. It's got a little bit of grog in it. So grog is just basically ground up bisque. It's, it's like a sand texture in your clay. Um, and that just gives it strength. Um, probably not a good one to go outdoors, but these are plates, so they're not going outdoors. Um, so I start out with a quarter of an inch. I rolled this slab out this morning today at about, I don't know, it was about nine o'clock. And then I wrapped it in plastic immediately. This is a project that you can do with wet clay right out of the bag. Um, so I'm going to just thin this out a little bit because I want it reminiscent to almost paper. I mean, not as thin as paper, but pretty thin. And I, I like to toss good therapy. 
to thin it out a little bit. And that's thin enough. So it's pretty thin. It's about a little more than an eighth of an inch. Um, and then I've got, I rolled this out on the slab roller so there's canvas texture that um, transferred over to the clay. So I want to get rid of that because I'm going to put my own texture in. And so I like to use a squeegee to get rid of that texture. That covers a lot of real estate. And it's kind of, it, it's kind of an organic process doing this. It's almost like if you've done paper collage, mixed media, um, you, you, you can't really plan it. It's more of a kind of a, you're just winging it a little bit. I mean, there's a little bit of planning, um, but it's just, it's a process. And I'm, I'm going to be going by this piece. So, so I'm getting rid of all that texture. And then another thing I like to do, I learned this from Ellen Currens, who is one of the original founders of Showcase. Um, I went to her studio in um, Dundee and she had a slab roller and she would have, she had this whole filing cabinet full of wallpaper and she would um, dust her, before she put her slab through the slab roller, she would dust it with cornstarch and then she would put the wallpaper on her piece, on her clay, and then roll it through the slab roller. And she, did I say cornstarch? I did. So the cornstarch helps release the texture. And that's where I learned that trick was from Ellen Currens, who's a fantastic there. She would have lines out the door on Friday when she was showing. So anyway. Um, let's see. So I'm going to use this plate form. This is just a bisque form that I'm going to use. And um, I'm just going to start going for it. So cornstarch. And you just need a little bit of cornstarch. And again, it just helps um, release the texture. I work with a lot of metal license plates. And so if I was to try to roll this onto the clay, the clay is really wet. This is going to stick because it's a non-porous surface. Um, so cornstarch works wonders. So, and sometimes I, my students, I see them like pouring on the cornstarch. It's like, you don't need a lot of it. It's gonna burn off in the kiln, but it's just kind of like baking. So now I'm going to, let's see, I'll just start with a side. And I'm just going to start cutting clay, little pieces, as if I were doing a collage. And then I'll stick that on top of the license plate. And I have a Richie Bellinger rolling pin. He discovered this today. So I used to work at a Richie Bellinger studio. So I have his rolling pin. <laughs> I've had it for like 10 years. Okay, so I'm gonna roll. You have to be really careful with the license plate because it's got super sharp edges and I'm putting, it's a rigid texture, so I'm putting that under the clay, putting the clay on top and rolling it to get a nice impression rather than putting the license plate on top of the clay because it would be too rigid. And just giving it nice even pressure. And Alaska, couldn't find my organ. I do a lot of organ license plates. So when I do my demos at Georgie's, um, I started, when I first started out, I was using license plates all the time. And then my students just started bringing me license plates. So I have license plates from all over. I even have one from Bulgaria. I had to get that one personally, go to Bulgaria and get it. <laughs> now I need one from Spain. So yes. Um, okay. So there's that. So I have a stack of license plates like that, maybe even more. Okay, so I add a little more texture to this. What do I want? So these are um, more commercial um, texture mats that I use. I do make a lot of my own texture, but I also use, hi, um, this is from Georgie's. And it's just a bunch of typography. I love typography. So you could see that. <laughs> and now what I'm doing is I'm just, as if I were doing a paper collage, oh, and it's starting to rip a little bit, that's okay. And the reason it's ripping, 
Never lick your finger when you're teaching kids. I start doing it for slip. Um, the reason it's ripping is because I rolled a little too hard on that edge and it cut it. So got to be careful. And this is super thin clay. So I've got that and I'm going to roll out some more. Um, So I'm just starting to place it on the plate with a little bit of an overlap. And then I'm going to do a bottom piece here. So use this texture here. And you can, when you're rolling texture, you can either put the texture mat underneath your clay or you can put the texture, um, the mat on top of your clay. It just, you know, depends. I tend to get a better impression when it's underneath, but it just depends. It's all a personal prefer preference. So I'm giving it nice, even pressure. Like that. I'm sticking that under there with a little bit of an overlap, like an inch overlap or so. And then let's see. Just going to thin that out a little bit. So the reason I'm making the clay really thin is because if you've got like my original um, size our original thickness was like a quarter of an inch. If you're stacking that clay on top of each other, it's just gonna look real clunky. I want this to look like paper. I want this to look really thin and just kind of blend nicely. Um, as you can see, these edges are really thin and I, I don't want it to be really chunky. Um, so, and there's a trick to that at the very end that I'll show you as well. If you get this too thin, um, you can, you can get some cracking on your plate. So there's a happy medium to this. Okay. License plate. I put the license plate underneath. Be careful with the edge there. Oh, I never work with rings. I'll take that off. And there's that, Alaska. Looking at this as a little cheater. So can you see how I'm just kind of draping that in the, and I'm just kind of winging this. I'm not really planning this out much. It's kind of like patchwork. It can be a little geometric here. All right. And, oh, I need my face. A little texture. Pull that over. Okay, so where is she? This one. Thank you. So I'm just cutting some pieces. Oh, and actually what I want to do is just flatten this out a little bit. So you can either toss it. Um, this takes a little practice if you want to thin out your clay, um, just to thin it out. You kind of, if you don't want to throw straight down because that's just, it's going to stop. You want to kind of like just gently toss it to the side and that stretches out the clay, thins it out. Or you can use a rolling pin. I think Dennis Miners, I think this is all he does to make his slabs is just tosses it. It's the master, right? Yes, and slab rollers, I love my slab roller. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make the lovely lady. Right there. So I'm just, I'm using this, this is very, very old, because I do block printing with ink as well. So she's a little soiled here. <laughs> and 
Just want our eyes peeking through like so. Actually, I'm going to do that again. I got plenty of clay. Add a little more cornstarch. Okay. There we go. And so I want to make sure when I'm overlapping the clay that when I'm overlapping it, it, there's at least an inch because if you're just barely overlapping it, like if it's, there's just a quarter or like a quarter of an inch where it's overlapping, it's going to be a weak spot. So you want a little bit of strength. So you want that clay overlapping each other. And what else? Let's Some more typography. There we go. Oh, that's not going to even show. Also, a spiral notebook is Okay, I'm having some rippage here. I can fix that. So again, I mean, this is a very organic process. I'm just kind of piecing this together. Can you guys see this plate okay? Yes, yes, you can. Yes. Pardon me? Well, you'll see. I, I'm, I am going to rip some of it intentionally to make it look like ripped paper. So see what I'm doing here? Just kind of overlapping it. There we go. Okay. So I've got something like this. And that looks a little geometric to me, so I want to kind of break it up with some round shapes. Um, so I'm going to just add something like this with a cookie cutter. Um, let me get more clay. And I have a... Um, I have an Instagram account, um, stephaniebertonstudios.com, so you can follow me there. I've got this this whole video sped up. I use the Hyperlapse app, and this is I've got a really fast video on my um, Instagram if you want to watch this again, um, but really fast. Shows you the whole process. You didn't even have to come here today. Could have just watched that. So, <laughs> so I'm stretching this out again. And then adding some cornstarch. I'm going to make this a little extra thin because I'm going to put it on top of all those layers. Add some cornstarch. Whoopsie, sorry. Oopsie, oopsie, feedback. Okay, so can you still hear me? Did I mess it up? No. Good. It's weird having a mic. Okay, more texture. And if you if you see my work at my booth, which is 77 right over there in the corner, um, I use a lot of typography in my work. So almost everything has some writing, some kind of typography in it. I used to be a sign painter like in the 80s, so where I'd actually do it, you know, not the vinyl, but I was painting with a little stick, you know, restaurants and things. <laughs> Okay, so I've got that texture here. 
and I'm going to use a cookie cutter. And then one little one, let's see. And then what I like to do is um, use a stitch tool. This is like for marking fabric, but I like to mark it in clay. So this is like my total signature. So all my students, that's the first thing they get is one of these. These are wonderful. If this is not in my my bin, you have one, right, Carla? Yes. Um, if this is not in my bin, I have a panic attack. Seriously, if I'm in class. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw, um, do a little um, stitching around this circle. Like to you know, almost look like patchwork. And then I'm going to stretch this out even a little more, just distort it a little bit. So I'm just tossing that. And then that distorts it, kind of like what James was doing with his monster texture. And that gives it an interesting look. And then, so again, I want the circles to kind of break this up a little bit. I'm not much of a geometric, I don't really, you know, like a lot of straight lines. Um, so I like to break it up. And then this also just makes it a little stronger. So there's not much going on here. So I'm going to add that there. Maybe that overlaps on her head a little bit. And then... This one probably will go over like here, like in this corner. It's a little too balanced, but that's okay. Or I could put it off to the side. I kind of like that idea. Maybe. Oh, I know what. This can go on the side. This can go here. No. Nope. See, this is the creative process. Yeah. That That's fine. Okay, so now I've got this all overlapped. Now I need to do some scoring because I need to attach this. Um, in my video, I don't do any scoring. I just kind of piece it together and I get all these comments like, did you slip and score? Why didn't you do that? But I, I just didn't want to show that in the video. It was all for show. So um, now, so I'm gonna trace, um, I've got a clay shaper this is a wonderful tool. I use it all the time. It's got a rubber tip. Um, I use it to trace my forms. I use it to do carving, any kind of detail work. Fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to lightly trace where these pieces are overlapping. And let's see if I can even pull this off. Can you guys, you can see that okay? See how that looks. There, there. Oh, there we go. Thanks. It's been a while since I've made one of these. Okay, so this one, I'm. let me get my score tool. So when I'm teaching at Georgie's, I, I put together this little, um, these are all my frequently used tools that I use. Um, these, these are the ones I use the most. Um, the, the score tool, the metal rib, a miter tool to do bevel cuts. Um, that's another score tool, a sponge, a red rib, fantastic. Um, Zacto knife, uh, what is that? J137 and then brushes. So that's my little frequently used tools. And this is one of those ribs. Um, it, it's just a portion of one of those metal ribs. I cut it into a little piece. They're usually a little bit bigger because I just like them a little smaller. And it's, you know, you can cut the metal. So I'm just gonna pull this up and score. And I need to score this. So whenever you're attaching clay, you wanna make sure and score both, both pieces. Like if you're making a cup, you want to score the base of the cup and you want to score the handle. And then you add your slip, your water, and then you attach it. So that is the key there. And then I'll add my water.
And I'm, I'm using pr uh, plastic I'm to smooth, to smooth those edges and to compress those edges. Debbie, no sleeping in my demo. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. Am I that boring? <laughs> this is what we did when we went to Enseca in Sacramento, and Debbie and I were both like falling asleep. Like, how embarrassing. Yes. Okay, so now I'm piecing this together. Um, let's see. So, one thing that I will do is um, this is a little thick. I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. And that'll distort the type a little bit, which is fine. And then what I do is I rip the edge because I want this, again, it's a collage converted into clay. I want this reminiscent of a, um, like a paper collage. So that ripping kind of makes it look, oh, crap. That's okay. Put that over the top. <laughs> Score. Oh, she went away. She could go sleep in her booth. <laughs> I guess. Okay, so I can press that down. You want to be careful because the clay is relatively soft. So if I start pushing with my finger, I'm going to get fingerprints. So what I like to do is use plastic and then just rub that and that sticks really nicely. And then it also kind of folds the clay even more to make it look like it's paper. And I use this trick all the time. Just rip the edge of this. I'm gonna stretch this one out because I don't have enough clay. Uh, what time is it? What's that? Thank you. I have till 4.30, right? I think so. Okay. So I stretched that out, and now I'm going to rip this again. I'm going to throw this clay to you. <laughs> At Georgie's, um, I think our classroom's about 50 feet. So maybe from here, probably a little farther than where the awards thing is. One day I was showing off my arm and I took some clay and I threw it to try to hit the wall across the room. And I hit Will. He's one of the um, teachers there. He had his beautiful piece covered in plastic and I hit it right in the center and he recently I think I did that about two years ago and he re recently posted on Instagram glazed it and then said a collaboration with me and Stephanie <laughs> so look up Will LaBelle look up his Instagram I'm gonna do that every quarter I think or every term okay I lost my tool so I'm overlapping, so this is my bottom layer, and I put this on top, and I'm going to put the next, so I'm kind of like, you know, tearing. Scoring that. Um, again, I'm using trail mix. That's like a basic clay that we use at Georgie's in the classroom. It's one of the most popular clay bodies. Um, I also like to use timberline it's got a little bit of grog in it um, it's a little wider clay body so the the glaze or the yeah the glazes really pop that's got a little more grog in it so for a really thin clay project like this um, it, it's a little stronger because it's got a little more grog um, so it, it's probably good to go with a little more grog when you're doing this project I just grabbed the clay I had at home wouldn't you agree Aaron timberline Aaron works at Georgie's too <laughs> Okay. 
Get that wet. So again, just taking that plastic, smoothing that down. So that really adheres the the clay, but it also makes it look like it's just paper thin. So see how thin that looks. And again, this is a process. You kind of just work through it and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's um, like this piece is not gonna fit, but that's okay. I've got these pieces over here. Oh, another thing while I'm just uh, being quiet here. Um, I am participating in a show with Debbie and Larry. Um, you're not going to be there this year. Owens oh, and Todd. Brenda's not going to join us this year. Um, this is the Shehala Mountain Art Affair. It's out in Hillsboro area. Shoals, Shoals Ferry, Shehala Mountain. So this is like, I kind of compare it to like a little mini country fair. We're out in the woods. We've been doing it for 17 years. There's 27 artists, um, throwers, metal, jewelry, wine. Sanchez does the wine. Um, so this is a great show to come out to. We've got wood-fired pizza, wine, music, and then it's Friday, no, Saturday and Sunday. So I've got cards here if you want to grab them. If not, Deb and Larry have them at their booth. Todd has them. I have them. Bill probably has some. So, um, and then I have business cards here as well. Okay, so put that piece on. Ripping, more ripping. Okay. So now I want to push this to get the, um, to form the shape of the plate. And I'm just going to fill in this little corner here with some leftover texture. Yes, totally. I don't ever get that angry. But it is a stress reliever. Okay, so that's going to go right there. So, score the back of this. Water. Oops. Um, barely. Okay. And now I have something like this. So imagine if this if this clay was a quarter of an inch and I kept stacking, that would get pretty chunky and heavy. So it, you know, I'm I'm flattening this out to about uh, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit thicker. And then when I'm doing overlays, I'm going thin again, so it doesn't look it doesn't get real bulky looking. Um, you know, this plate looks super pretty thin, I would say. And this is um, one of my first generation collage plates, a little more abstract. So. And then um, just to kind of talk about this a little bit, my process of how I glaze, um, the dark 
Underneath here is um, copper. It's an interactive pigment, which is an oxide, basically. It's autumn foliage. Um, so when this is bisque fired, when this piece is bisque fired, I brush on an oxide, let it sit for maybe five or ten minutes, um, and then I wipe that back. I wipe it off and then let that dry a little bit. And then I come in and do my glazing. And these plates, I usually will use a fan brush shaped like this for these glazing these plates. But these these little ridges are wonderful. I do all brushing because my work's not really conducive for dipping because I want to do all these different colors. And the way that I approach one of these plates is I like to do matte glossy, matte glossy, just to kind of create some interest. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of use that ripped edge to guide my brush. And it, it, it's just, it's really easy to glaze these. Um, so little tidbit on that. All right, what's next? Okay, so now I'm gonna actually add these little appliques or whatever you wanna call them. Whoopsie. <laughs> I'll go with the heavier one, the bigger one down below, just to give it some balance. The other thing that these do when I when I put on this little added texture, it kind of ties in this piece to this piece to this piece. So if you know anything about design, that's kind of like pulling you in and it's it's bringing these th three pieces together. And then push that on there. And because it's so thin, I mean, you can still see kind of the, the ripple or the um, the clay underneath, but that's okay. And then I'm just smoothing that. And also when you use plastic over the texture, it's not gonna mess up your texture. If I was to use my finger and rub it, that would, that would smudge the texture. And then this guy, voila. Like so, there we go. Okay, so I have something like this. So now, Debbie, wake up. <laughs> so this is just, I borrowed this from James. It's just that hardy backer board that I'm gonna use to flip this. So then what I do is I'll put the, you're really hurting my feelings, Debbie. <laughs> I put this on the, the board here I'm gonna flip this, and then I'm gonna put this other board on top, so that fits well. Oh wait, let me do something here. The smaller one. Hui. Okay. And then I'm gonna give it a little flip, like so. And then I've got the, as you can see, the overlapping clay. And then I'm gonna just cut off this excess clay. I'm just gonna hug the edge of this and just cut straight. We got another sleeper in front, no sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's not, I'm not gonna take it personally. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Okay, good. Well, I know the reason I fell asleep in the, the demos in, in Sika because I was bored, but okay, good. Oh, goody. I'm just playing. Okay, so I'm just cutting away that excess. Oh, and this is another little stamp of mine, Matahari. I use her a lot. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it again. And 
Now I've got this real abrupt edge. I want to smooth that down, kind of like, you know, when you see the tiles, they have a bull nose edge. They're, they're you know, bent down a little bit. Um, I want to have a nice finished edge, not just an abrupt edge. So I'm going to smooth that down and I'm going to use the plastic again. A lot of times people will just use water and use their finger, but I, I feel like I have more control with the plastic. So it, it's just basically a personal preference. Um, and also the reason I like to use um, plastic to smooth down my edges, because when I if I use water to smooth these edges down, I'm going to come back in and add texture and I don't want that. That water is going to be a problem. So this just works for me. There's some pure people that just purists that won't use plastic, but I'm all about it. So I'm smoothing the edge here. And I, I'm not doing this. I'm actually keeping the plastic stationary and just running my finger across that. It creates a nice um, rounded or smooth edge. So it doesn't look like it's it's cut. And then, of course, I have to add more texture. So I, I'm just going to add a little bit of cornstarch to this because I'm going to be using metal as my texture. And if there's any moisture here, it may stick. So it's maybe it's a crutch, but it works for me. You use it, cornstarch. Got wet. What's that? I still didn't hear you, Samuel. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to um, finish off the edges. This is just a tool. It's got a diagonal lines on it. And it just kind of finishes off the edge. You don't have to do that. I mean, I, I guess I did it on this one. Just gives it a finished look, but like on, on this plate, that looks nice without any other added texture. So it's just if I feel like adding texture, which usually I do, I kind of go nuts with the texture. So let me get rid of this board. Okay, so I'm just rolling the texture on the edge. Whoopsie. It just kind of ties it all in. And then one last little thing that I do with this is I like to come back in and use the stitch tool. Then it looks like it's kind of stitched on there. I see a lot of mixed media collage where they use, they actually use thread and they're stitching. Just love that look. What's that? There you go. Oh, you can't hear? Oops, sorry. There we go. How long has it been that way? I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus. You should have said something, Brenda. Why didn't you say something? Is that why everyone left? <laughs> so there it is. It's finished. Woohoo! <laughs> A little busy. So the way that I would, um, thank you. The way that I would, um, then I would put plastic over the top of this. So this is one thing that I teach my students is you would not. So let's just say, because I teach eight, an eight week term at Georgie's and sometimes people can only come back like once a week. We have open studio, but say for instance, you were to put this on the shelf without plastic on it for a week. What do you think is going to happen to this piece? Yeah, it, it's. It's going to start drying unevenly. It's going to maybe pull up on one edge, pull up on another edge, and it's going to be warped. So you want to be really, really conservative. Plus, this because this is really thin slab, so you want to wrap it with plastic. And I, when I'm making these collage plates, I let them sit for a good week wrapped in plastic. Um, one of the, my coworkers was trying to make plates, just one plate, not a collage plate, and he was getting all this warpage. And I said, that's you have to do that. You have to dry them really slowly under plastic. That's kind of the key. Um, and then, you know, once it's stiff leather hard, then you can pop it out of the form. Um, but I wouldn't want to. And then I, I actually, um, I don't put feet on the bottom of these. Um, I just kind of like this aesthetic a little better. 
Um, you could build a foot on that if you wanted to. I could build a foot now and just have it separate and have that dry in here with plastic over it so they're both the same dryness or moistness when you attach it. So, um, but I kind of just like this aesthetic and I don't, I just put oxide on the back, so. Oh, weight bags. Um, you know, that's not a bad idea. I've never done that, but that would, no, mm -mm, no. I, I really try to push it down to the, and, and if you're, if you're covering it with plastic, it's going to, but if I didn't, oh, see, that's different. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's probably more problematic with your climate, but so that's it. That's all I have. You guys have any questions? No questions? Oh, thank you. How sweet. So again, if you want some cards for the Shehala Mountain Art Affair, this is a fantastic show. I've got business cards. My booth is 77. Uh, follow me on Instagram, stephanieburton.com or stephaniebertonstudios.com. And I have a studio in Vancouver. I teach there. So that's it. That's all she wrote. <laughs>